computer. All right. Well, I was just looking at this uh, website called Astro Bin, or have you seen that, Jerry? You must have seen that. Um, I've looked at so many, I probably have, but what, what attracted your attention to it? It was uh, just amazing uh, images that they put on there. I guess oh, it's on, okay. my, on my browser here. If I share. It wants me to sign into Astro Bin. Yeah, yeah, you got to sign in, uh, sign up for it. Uh, here's yeah, your, here's, that. That, here's that uh, New Mexico place that uh, you guys mentioned in the email. Uh huh. And uh, quite oh, looks, like, looks like little, New Mexico, all right. It's a small observatory, it looks like, but boy, look at this stuff. It it's amazing it what a wide, wide angle lens will do. <laughs> right. Look at the equipment in that there. That looks like a rolling roof observatory. Um, no, a you dome, can... it looks like a rotating dome. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, really? Okay. First yeah. one, well, I see a square building there in the middle. Yeah. Hmm. Let me go back. Make it a little bit bigger. How much does he want for it? Good question. Oh, you look at down here, 490000 for the house. Jesus. And the telescope, I assume, comes with it. That's a good question. Let's see, is it say anything about that down below? 1,400 square feet, it's bigger than our house. Let's see, two, two acres, that's nice. Two bedrooms, abundant wildlife. <laughs> Coyotes. Motor home. Yeah. Interior, external. I'm looking for the observatory. Do not, not listing it. This New Mexico, right? Yeah. Al Alamo Gordo. Alamo Gordo. Alamo Gordo. Yeah. What, what, That's what where do you think the atomic bombs? Is that really close? Yeah. I don't know if it's close to this place, but Alamo Gordo is near where they tested them. <laughs> Oh, huh. All right, with Astro Bin, what was that looking at? Oh, that's like a shot like this. Oh, that's very nice. So it's a place where people post their astrophotography. Yeah, that looks like um, a composite. Yeah, cameras can't get that dynamic range all in one shot. Yeah. Uh, Dick is getting pretty close. And a actually. mosaic. It's very wide angle at the same time. Let's say here. Right, but this is the kind of picture that Dick is taking with his uh, Astro Cat. Right. He has sort of the same colors in there as well. <clears throat> let's see. So the original versus, let's see, this is original. So original is kind of blown out, I think. Hmm. And then he does a final. And it's a little more subdued, I think. Huh. He says that, he, uh, no, that's the Pleiades. What is that? It's Ro uh, Ro Ophiuchi. So that okay. this is uh, what is this? This is gosh darn! I can't point with my mouse on here for some reason. I think that's Antares, and uh, the globular cluster is M four. Yeah, that's up above yeah. the Antares. And Ro. Uh, Ophiuchus is one of those star groups there. There's, there's two groups of three stars. Is, don't know. But it's it's interesting all the folks that post mm -hmm. post here. Mm -hmm. Yep, beautiful. So astrobin.com. Yeah, that, that's, by the way, that's the place where everybody posts their photos. It used to be free, but a couple of years ago, they started with a subscription model. So it's it has become less popular, but people still, you know, this is still the main site where everybody posts their stuff. That's the wizard over there. That's a, a very colorful wizard. Yeah. Well, well, okay. well, what are you looking at? What wizard well, do you see? Du Duterman. The Wizard Nebula. Yeah. Oh, oh right there. Wizard, W-I-Z-A-R-D? 
Yep. Yeah. The upper right one. <clears throat> yeah. And we're, that where, is, where is where is the Wizard Nebula located? Which constellation? Oh God, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I know a lot about astrophotography, but not so much about the sky. Sorry. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Here, here, it. here near Cepheus, it looks like. Uh huh. Oh, it's above the North American Nebula. Okay. Okay. North American Nebula, that's near... Um, Deneb. Uh, yeah, Deneb, yeah. In the Cygnus. It, yeah. Yeah, that, that much I know. Actually, I took an image of the American Nebula one time. <clears throat> Very nice. That's yeah, amazing, amazing stuff there in that Astro Bin channel. So you can you can you can log in. I mean, for for free, but I guess I guess if you want to post, yeah, you got to pay for some mm -hmm. hard drive space. All right, so we're not seeing. Oh, oh, I got two people in a waiting room. Got to let these other people in. I didn't wasn't seeing that. Admit all. Sorry, guys. I was... Hi, Dick. Hi, Mike. I was showing a web page. What's going on here? I'm not getting any sound. Dick, we can hear oh. you. Yeah, we I, I can barely hear you. Hold on a second here. I can't. Probably just need to boost your sound a little bit somewhere. Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, wow. Somehow good. There we go. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> so I, I was just sharing the Astro Bin web, website with folks. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Hank, Hank is saying this is the Wizard Nebula. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. So Dick, I think I mentioned, have, have you ever looked at this website? Uh, no, I have not. What is the name of it now? It's called the... Uh, Astrobin.com. Astrobin.com, I'll write it down here. I do have a shot of the wizard, but Astrobin. And uh, I was looking up earlier at the Ro Ophiuchus. Uh, oh yeah. <clears throat> Someone posted that. Where I disappeared on me yeah that website also has a feature where it shows the names of all the nebulas and all the objects that, that are in the image so there's always the original one that doesn't have it and one that uh, that shows all that stuff uh -huh. it's got a plate solver built in wow yeah. cool what kind of scope is this here? It looks like Williams Optics, something. Yeah. Um, no, no fancy colors. Oh, here's this description down below. Like 100 millimeters at least, so 370 millimeter focal length. 61 millimeters. Okay, yeah, 61 millimeters. F6. F6. And he's using a 50 millimeter to guide. <laughs> mm -hmm. He doesn't say what camera he has on there. Do you see that or am I missing that? Uh, yeah. Omega, right here. Oh. The Omegatron, Omegon VLOX 290C planetary camera. Oh, that's the, that's the guide scope. Yeah. Oh, here's the imaging camera. Altair Hypercam 183M Pro. Hypercam. Yeah. Ioptron oh. mount. Mm -hmm. Wooden tripod. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, they don't, they have more damping in them than this metal ones. That's why Chuck likes his. Uh -huh. Very clever. So, do you guys have anything they want to talk about? Present. Uh. Are we what happened to me is it looks like the observatory is going to fall through 
the company, I don't know what the heck is going on with these guys, but it looks to me like they're they're going under. Uh, I tried to call them this week, and I got the guy, I got the secretary there. She answered the phone, said hello, with no company name. And so then I asked if I could talk to somebody that knew something was going on, and basically kind of got the runaround on that sort of a deal. So I think these guys are going under, so I'll probably cancel the order, and I'm thinking more along the lines of what Bob Richard's doing. He, he did home going, didn't he? Isn't it a home going that he's doing? So, so. sorry, what, what company were you talking about, Dick? I, I, I didn't hear the first part. Uh, well, the first part, the company that I'm working with has been this Polydome or Explorer Dome outfit. Oh, oh, for your observatory. Okay. Yeah, for yeah. the observatory. And, and, and I think it's going to fall through. Uh, I've had it on order since the 22nd of January. And the guy, I talked to the guy about a month ago, and he said, well, we're waiting on the store. Well, uh, and he said, no later than the middle of July. Well, here we are. We'll pass that now. And so I called them this last week and, you know, just kind of got the runaround. Nobody to talk to. They'll call me back type of thing. And nobody's called me back. Yeah, these are the guys. And so, uh, and that's when I dialed the first number of the contact info. I got a hello. And then I thought, well, geez, that doesn't sound too good. You know, no company name or nothing like that. And uh, so I kind of talked to, I ordered it through OPT. Uh, and so I'm going to have to go back to those guys. Now, Bob Richards' route is a little bit more expensive. Actually, it's going to be probably maybe almost three times as much money. Uh, but that's... Well, he's actually that. gone to a larger diameter one. It'll still fit yeah, on the fat pad foot. that he has. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, it was a 10-foot. And to do that, I think he was quoting somewhere around 18 grand or something like that for... Three, he's going to put three levels of tiers on the bottom of the thing. And I went for the 10 foot, uh, six inch round guy, but it, it just, uh, it just doesn't seem like these guys want to deliver. So, uh, that's a big problem for me. Uh, yeah, these are the guys that I'm going. Is that, is that the same thing as Bob? Yeah, home dome trying to, yeah, home dome. It looks like they've been hacked. Yeah. Oh, you don't they get click, hacked? You don't want to click on it. downloads probably here. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I didn't do that. I did. I do have them up, but I didn't get a Trojan thing. Yeah, Trojan's a bad word in computers here. Well, that's not a good sign. No. Click on products. Well, at least the home page shows that. This is a, the product page seems to work. I went to the home page though. Maybe I got Trojan now. Anyhow, uh, the 10 foot, yeah, you know what? That's funny because I didn't get a price list quite like that at all. Mine was different. Uh, let's see. But anyway, the 10 foot one is what I'm thinking of. Now, I heard about some people use the uh, computerized uh -huh. film and they liked it. Uh, so, and they said the guys, want, some of them are astrophotography guys, so that seemed promising to me, and it didn't seem like it was that expensive. I think the whole system was 2100 bucks. so huh. that's not too bad. So that's falling apart on me, and so I've got to kind of, you know, I'm going to have to probably cancel the order on that. I had gotten some rings for the C14 because I'm going to mount, uh, I'm going to mount that uh, aiming station on top of that. And they got canceled without anybody telling me. So when I found that out, I was pretty unhappy. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to get some C14 rings. I have one deal on Astro Mart, a guy selling some that says 15 inches middle to middle, but I don't think that's going to be big enough. I, you know, you can get these rings in various sizes and even real close to the size that you need, but not quite there. Well, you, you, um, you can get the rings that are close to the right way. And you can put in shims, you know, like an eighth inch uh, nylon band that goes around the inside. So onto the tube. this one says 15 inches, middle yeah. to middle. Middle to middle. You mean um, 
Yeah, without the, That's the diameter. without the felt and so forth on the inside. Oh, metal to metal, not middle to middle. Yeah, right? uh, okay. let me bring. I'll bring it up. I'll bring well, what's it up. the exact OD of your tube? Well, I don't know. I haven't really measured oh. it. I've kind of gotten down there with a the tape measure, and it's around 15 inches, is what I'm going to say. But the number that I'm hearing people say is about 15.3. And where are you getting this from? Is what you need. Uh, that's what I what I got when I when I googled it the dimensions and so forth. They're, they're and where where are you getting that from? The, where are those rings available? Oh, the rings that uh, I got. Uh, what did I get bombed out on? I, I don't know if it was High Point or one of these sites. It was an OPT, uh, and I think they were parallax rings. Okay, uh, which is kind of what I was looking at, but now I'm seeing that you know they want all these dimensions. Even if you say I'll, I've got a C14, they want want all these dimensions and so forth. Now that, that's the software Bass ones, and I'm thinking about getting them. Uh huh. But uh, and I don't know if anybody's got any experience with those guys, but that's a, again a special order. And uh, now, did they say anything about uh, back order or anything like that? So. That might be what I'm going to have to end up doing is get those right there uh, rather than take a chance on these ones being the wrong size. Because I know that uh, Parallax makes 15 inches. They make 15.3 inches. They make different sizes. So you got to be a little careful. Expanded lead time. With yeah. holes drilled in them, they'll, they'll do it for you. Yeah. By the way, I tried to go to uh, homedome.com and now our bites blocked. They said the website is blocked to do to Trojan. Oh, no. Well, that's not good because I'm on there right now. Well, I continue to cite, but if I believe malware bites. They, they work. Malware bites, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let me, yeah. For $775, you can buy a Newtonian that has rings that come with them, you know. <laughs> I, uh, you know, my 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 twelve inch uh, newt uh, has very good rings, and it is uh, eight hundred dollars. So you know, for twenty five bucks more, you get a whole. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a C fourteen. No. So that's the issue. Okay, I know C fourteen. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah the C fourteen is what I, it's focal length. I need uh, my power. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so. Wow. Well, Explore Dorm website seems looks pretty good. It's funny that they would be going out of business. It's, I don't get the guy. You know, it's almost like the guy does not really want to ship to California or certain states. You go, oh, we don't get much, many orders from there. So <laughs> I really don't know what their problem is. But uh, after not having the guy call back and just getting the run around, I, I don't know, guys. I, I'm i still holding a little flag out there, but I, I doubt. You haven't sent them any money yet, have you? Well, I paid for the stuff on OPT, but they, oh, you know, okay. if you don't have product, then, you know, they can't. So I, OPT is honorable. They should refund your money. Yeah, they, they got to deliver. refund my money. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go for next is uh, let's it's put up or shut up time for yeah. these guys. I've even made a deal with them that they can't get the man door. Uh, I'll take it with that and I'll pay the extra postage for the man door when they get it. So I've tried to be reasonable on my side of the fence. It is a lot less money uh, that we're talking about here than let's say that home loan, or, you know, probably about a factor three. So, but if they can't do it, they can't do it. So, and I paid for the freight and everything. So I, I got to have my money refunded or, uh, Either that or I got to have the product. So that's my, 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 that's my woe, woes. Yeah, I've looked at those guys too. They're pretty Whoa. expensive, the Astro Havens. Uh, there's another one that is called Apelion, I think is the name of them. And they're a little cheaper. And they run on telescope. Is it telescope.net? I think it's the name of the site that has those guys. Um, so you can get those guys. You know what I like about home dome though, is they have 10 foot dome and 10 feet in our county and probably in a lot of Cal California counties 
is the limit that you can go. That's the max size you can have without a permit. And uh, I don't know what it's like in your county, but this county is absolutely. You rigid. mean there's a specific size limit on astronomical domes? No, there's a specific size limit on what kind of a building structure you oh. can have on your property. I thought it was 100 over, square feet. Over 10 feet. No, it's there's 10 feet here in Slow County. It's 10 feet. So anything over 10 Normally feet. it's 100 square feet if you're going to put up an, an, an extra, you know, an outbuilding. You know, yeah. those, um, those laws changed. Um, um, and the counties are different, too. I mean, you know, they can put any ordinances they want. Yeah. The state overrules and the state laws changed in January of this year or last year, allowing granny units and all sorts of large sheds in your backyard that were not previously permitted. Mm. Well, all I can say is it took me over a year to get the permitting to build a shop on my property here. This county is absolutely unbelievably ridiculous. And I asked the guy that did the did my did the job on my place, and he said that it would easily right now cost twice as much to build what I built, just because of the way that the county is and, and the difficulty in getting materials and supplies now. Yeah, I know the cost of materials is way up, especially wood. Gone way. Oh, 100, 120 dollars for a, a three quarter inch eight and a half eight by four by eight piece of plywood. <laughs> at mm. at uh, and Home Depot, that's ridiculous. Well, uh, speaking about costs and all that, has anybody had to change a, a hot water heater? I mean, hot water heater. Uh, you're <laughs> I've never at gotten a, a permit to you're put looking in a hot at water a lot of, you're, you're looking at a, a lot of money. Uh, my mom had to replace one. It costs more for the labor and more importantly, uh the uh inspection county uh city inspection and all that uh i think the the hot water heater was a thousand but they wound up uh, spending about twenty five hundred dollars for the permits and all that was were they changing the size of the water heater no they should have just put it in there without a permit that's what I did. My last water heater went out and I got it replaced on yeah. warranty and I just put it in to hell with it. And them. how are they going to know? Yeah. They're not going to know. Yeah. You know it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to know. Is that a new water heater or no water heater? If you, hire, if you hire a heater. licensed plumber, then they have, they report it yeah. and then they, you have to go through the whole legal rigmarole. Well, Here's the great, way, the workaround of that, let me tell you, I've been dealing with this stuff a lot lately. The workaround with that is you just say that you're going to get the permits. Okay, you're done. I'm getting the permits. You can do the work. I want you to do the work, but I'm doing all the permitting. End of story. When my uh, water heater was replaced, which was a REEM, R-H-E-E-M, which is only sold through Home Depot, it experienced a problem called explosive percussive ignition. And uh, it's a known problem and you can find it on the internet. And I, it was a big to do to get it to replace, but ultimately I got it replaced and Home Be Depot yeah. hired a plumber who came out, took out my old one, put in a new one, no permits, no nothing. It was just done deal. Yeah. 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 I had to do it when I, I did my dad's water heater. So I, was, I did some plumbing for a while, was a licensed plumber, and he wanted to do it that way. But there's really no reason why, you know, so. Yeah, the tankless water heater in my house went out after uh, nine months. It uh, had developed a leak in the heat exchanger, huh. and I got that replaced, and I just went down and got a new one and put it in myself. You know, I didn't have to make any changes. Just put it in. Did that do that under warranty? Did you get? Oh yeah, it was on. Definitely, it was under warranty. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah. They wanted all kinds of pictures, and I had to take it apart and show them the pictures. But it was very apparent the heat exchanger failed. There was big green growth on it where the water was coming out and getting, you know, crystallized. It's supposed to have a fifteen-year warranty on it. <laughs> a water heat explosion yeah well that mine didn't do that but 
mine had what was called percussive ignition. And it was the point that when it ignite, it would blow out the pilot light and then it would quit. Mm -hmm. And the tenants kept calling me and I go, I showed them how to light it. And I, you know, I, oh, that was interesting. I uh, talked to Reem and I talked to some guy in sales and uh, explained the problem to him and what the difficulty I was having getting Home Depot to warranty it. They said, well, no, we're going to warranty it. And he says, what? And he says, this is not my job, but I will take care of this. And he finally sent a, a message to Home Depot's manager, Jeremy, whatever his name is, that, uh, you know, this is a warranty. Well, I bring the heater back in. I physically brought it in because it, the uh, plumber had already removed it. And I brought it into the into Home Depot. And I said, here, I'm here to have this replaced. And they said, no, we won't warranty it. I said, then what are you going to do? How are you arguing with Reem? He says, we'll refund your money. So hmm. they did. So I went and got a brand new one. The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I brought that back to my house, called the plumber back, and he put it in. So, Mike, uh, I got to ask you, uh, anything going on with your Windy Cities observatories? Uh... Yeah, we had our, our first in-person meeting uh, about a week uh, last Monday or the Monday before. I wasn't there okay. because I was in San Francisco uh, helping a friend, but it it went pretty well. Uh, we had both uh, members come in person and in Zoom. And so I think that's what's going to be going on for a while until everybody uh, gets vaccinated and, uh, you know, is not too scared. Although I, I have to admit, uh, you know, the infection rates start to go up and on the 13th of next month I'm scheduled to go uh, help out with public outreach at Rush Ranch and I'll probably be wearing a mask mm -hmm. you know, just because yeah, Santa Barbara County just reinstituted masks for everybody indoors so now well, the I, I went to uh, Staples today to buy some uh, uh, stationary supplies yeah and they got a big sign up there it says if you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask and uh, otherwise wear a mask. Well, I'm yeah. vaccinated, but I wore a mask anyway. Yeah, well, that's yeah, because people... yesterday. Yeah. No, that's people today are... I did that. I know, but the, it, they, they, they just haven't got onto it there yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the that's new a... rule came out yesterday. Yeah, plenty of vaccinated people are getting sick. <sighs> Why vaccinate then? So you know, <laughs> well, not... it's this, it's this oh. new Delta variant. And uh, it's I guess it depends which vaccine people. you have, whether or not you're vaccinated against that one. Yeah. Instead of dying on, on a ventilator, you you might go to the hospital with some some issues. But uh, the severity if you're vaccinated and you get it, it's a very light case. But, but yes. very few people that are vaccinated are getting it. Something like 98% of the people in the hospitals yeah. are um, unvaccinated. 99.5% actually. So Okay, good. It's it's great. I went to Santa Barbara Electronic Supply the other day, other week actually, and there's a young, a 20-something kid that's behind the, the counter, and he's not wearing a mask. Well, I am, and I said, uh, "Where's your mask?" And he says, "Well, you know, they, you don't have to wear a mask now. They've passed that law." I said, "Have you been vaccinated?" He says, "No." <laughs> so I called the owner, you know, and I I told him the next time I came in, the guy's wearing a mask. Yeah. Okay, well, on a lighter topic, can I show you some pictures that I took when I was in high school? Yeah, yeah, and let's first, see that. First attempt, uh, just a few of them. With film, huh? I'll try and With guess film. your hair color before uh, you show the first picture. <laughs> okay. I got, I got, I read an interesting statistic today, and this regards, you know, what you're going to show here. Uh, film only... Uh, um, gets seven percent of the energy that it the is. incoming light gets, whereas CMOS sensors detect seventy percent of the light. Yeah, it's That's the linearity so versus work. reciprocity failure. Can you see yeah. this? Am I sharing anything you can yeah. see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. a negative picture. A negative, yeah, yeah. A negative. Most of them are negatives. This is a four by five inch oh. piece of sheet film, and I took this with. Uh, I built a camera out of the War Surplus Arrow Tessar lens, a four element 
four inch diameter uh, F6. So it's 24 inch focal length. Uh -huh. And of course on this one, way down in the corner with a magnifier, you can see uh, M81 and M82. Uh -huh. I think this is the one for can that. Can you expand that? Can you blow it up? Uh, I don't know how to do that, but oh. this one, but I will show Control you some plus. Other. This is a, from pictures I took of Jupiter. <laughs> Similar methods. Mm -hmm. So I, I mounted the cut film holder where I lived when I was a kid. It was so dark. I didn't have to really make anything light type, although I did run a black cloth over things. But I used eyepiece projection onto this film, which was held about six inches away from the camera. And this one was done on um, my six inch F8 Newtonian eyepiece projection with an orthoscopic eyepiece. And then I'd stop the drive for a moment and have it move over and then I'd expose again. And the exposures were done with a cardboard box cover, the lid. <laughs> the hat I'd, trick. Yeah, the hat trick. I'd painted black and it, it hung over the front of the tube. And when everything was stable, I'd lift it off, I'd count to five or whatever, and then I'd slowly put it back on so there was no jiggle. And then- so You were guided then? Uh, that was just tracking. It wasn't guided. Yeah, it was, okay, it was, just track, it was, okay. I had, I had a, um, what was it? Uh, a synchronous motor that ran 60 cycles. Okay. And, and uh, I made a Winebridge oscillator and I could change the frequency of it to do fine tracking. My trouble oh. with that was that I didn't have enough magnification to really see um, these, what, how my errors were accumulated. These, were, these ones were taken um, at prime focus of the six inch F8. And obviously you notice M82 and the flame nebula out here. And these little arcs are reflections off the inside of the IP's focuser tube. Hmm. So the tracking on some of these gets pretty funny. This was a chemical stain down there, but it shows the moon. <laughs> this one, um, no, I'd have to dig around to magnify that. This mm -hmm. one shows my attempt at getting Saturn. Saturn, yeah. Yeah. So, Jerry, what, what, Jerry, why do they call that safety film, Kodak safety film? Because it red light doesn't expose it. Huh, yeah. Okay. And I, you uh, can use red light in the dark room to see what you're doing, and you don't, you don't fog the film. Right, but I never did that with the film. I always did the film in complete darkness by feel. Wow. And uh, so this one, of Jupiter, you can see the. I was, the, I was the. Uh, the class photographer in high school and I had a four by five speed graphic. Yeah. And I remember and going into a completely dark room to load the film holders right. with film with four by five sheet film. Yeah. And then I go back into the, after it was all done, you go into the dark room, turn everything off, you pull out the sheet film, put it into the, the plastic box that you're gonna uh, process it in. Then you right. can turn the lights on. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, That's those nice. are the short those samples. Are like the what are those? These are Jupiter. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. See, there's, and there's the great red spot that right there. Uh -huh. So, Jerry, but, what kind of exposure time were you doing on this? These, as I recall, there was something that was easy to count. So they were probably five or 10 second exposures. Say 400 ohm? I do, I do 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, you know, at, for seconds like that. When you expose the film, uh, I'm sorry, you process the film, did you, did you push it? I, I'm sorry, you dropped out half in some of your when words. You, move this back up here. You process the film, did you push the ISO? Uh, yes. yes. So this is probably ISO 800 then when you, or is 1600? This, I was usually using, um, rarely I'd use plus X, I was mostly using tri X. Tri X, yeah, and that's what I, I use. Agfa had a similar film to Tri-X and I'd use that too. So that was a good balance. I didn't like the grain of really pushed um, things that were more, there was film that was more sensitive than Tri-X, but I didn't like it. And I never forked over the money to get the spectroscopic films like 103AF or 103AE. So I just stuck with commercial um, cut film and 35 millimeter film.
Jerry, what yeah. years what years is this that you're doing this? This was this was about 1960, 1961 when I was in the 11th grade. So they were it was a school project for um, you know science fair project. So I did some of these pictures. I can't find it yet, but I actually took a spectra of Sirius um, using a, a replica grading I bought from Edmund Scientific, and it shows the Balmer series of hydrogen in it, and that was the centerpiece of my science science fair project but my girlfriend beat me with the um she did owl balls as their science project and she won the prize so um what owl balls are is owls don't have any teeth and they eat mice so they oh yeah the mouse hole and then their stomach digests what they want and the bones and the fur are crushed together into a little football shaped thing and they regurgitate that well, she went around and dug them up from various owl nests that she had known around the property. And uh, she'd soak them in bleach and get the bones out. And then she glued the bones back together to see what the animal was that they were eating. So Tedious, huh? Yeah. But um, <laughs> dang, I thought the mine was better, but the judge <laughs> didn't agree. So. <clears throat> so there's another one. Okay, this one has got a date on it. It's upside down and backwards. I think it says 62. Yeah, 62. So Codex Safety Cal, it doesn't say what one it is. Anyway, um, I think Plus X had two notches, Tri X had three notches, and Agfa Films had square notches. That's how I remember that in the dark. <clears throat> so, any there, that's my flashback for the, for the evening. You have to be careful storing these uh, things, or they get over. They they will fade with time. They are sensitive. They are fading. Um, I keep them in these. Um, oops. Well, the silver starts reverting to metallic in, silver in envelopes like this. It's just it's like a tissue paper envelope, and then I store them in a box away from light, cardboard box. You flood it with nitrogen? No, and I didn't hyper and I didn't hypersensitize these things either. Yeah. So I don't think they knew, knew how to do it back then. Yeah, uh, there was a guy uh, that was a regular out at uh, Mount Pinos, Alan McClure, and he was out there taking um, comet pictures every time a comet would come through wonderful pictures just dedicated to it and he hypersensitized all his film. Now is that something you do before you take the exposure? Yeah, yeah. You get the film ready and then you uh, expose the film within a few days of hypersensitizing it and uh, then you develop it right away. You bake the film in a vacuum chamber and then you Put in forming gas, which yeah. is basically hydrogen. So I, oh, uh, yeah, I'm not, I never heard about that. Yeah, the oxygen kind of short circuits the photons. In, it in puts the, it. In the well, hydrogen is a reducing agent, so that uh, brings a silver in the uh, silver exactly side of it. Yeah. It's a reducing atmosphere have, instead of an yeah. oxidizing atmosphere. What's this a picture of? Uh, this is M39. Um, I oh, took okay. it uh, the other night. And, and uh, uh, unfortunately, this um, I, I forgot to collimate the newt, and you can tell. So in the upper left, you'll see some streaks. But uh, Oma. the nice thing about this is that I finally got down to some reasonable RMS values. So this is. So is this the, are these the pictures you took when you went to the um, Kaibab no. Mead? The Kaibab. No, no. There's, this is. Uh, I did this uh, last week. Oh, okay. Actually, a few days ago, yeah, last week, I think. But this was the one time when I got down to 0 0.6 uh, arc seconds RMS uh, total, which is which is where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did this by Dick, by the way. I, I followed up on what you said, uh, just to counterweight the. Uh, oh, yeah, I ought to balance it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that cut the, uh, the RMS value for RA yeah. in, into less than half. So oh, good. That's good. good. That's great. great. Yeah. And I knew that that's that's what you have to do. But I had never done it, and because I, 
you know, I, um, I, I got all this equipment and it just took me a long time to just master all that stuff. And sure. now I'm finally getting to the point where I can. Uh, so this is in Auriga? Sorry? If this is in Auriga, Auriga, uh, 739 in Auriga? Um, I know it's near, probably near Deneb somewhere, uh, not too far oh. away at least. Because that's, I was uh, imaging the Northeast. <clears throat> this is guided or unguided? Sorry? Is this a guided or unguided? This oh, is guided. guided. Yeah, it's auto guided. Um, I may not, I'm not sure if I polar lined. And so last night I took another one, or was it last night? Yeah, I think it was last night. This one, this time I could only get an RMS of uh, one arc second total. And I, I, I think I blame it on the weather because it was very hot last night. I mean, yesterday was hot, right? So it, um, I could not get down to the 0.6 RMS. And, and you can tell, I mean, some of these stars are, are kind of bloated. So, but this time I did uh, collimate it. What's your, Nothing special. What's, your, what's your exposure time, Hank? Um, I'm taking 60 seconds and this one is uh, 30 images altogether. And I, I had now, to one of the it. problems that I've had do, doing a 30 second exposure is, especially with the turbulence atmosphere, is uh, all the stars get bloated. Now, when you oh. auto guide, does that take that out? Uh, okay, so it, it will not take the bloating out. I mean, if you have bloating, it, it takes the, the, the uh, turbulence, you know, the, the star is wiggling around. Right, right. I, I see what you mean. Um, no, it will not do anything about that. Yeah. So if, it, if you have like, I mean, typically on bad nights, you can have like two arc, sec <coughs> arc seconds um, <clears throat> seeing, and that, that uh, really ruins your pictures. But there's nothing you can do about it. So, but, you know, um, on a good night, then it, it really helps if you can guide it like uh, 0.25 arc seconds RMS. And that's what I'm trying to get at. So I'm not there yet, but uh, I'm, I'm closing in, I, I think. So um, I still have to play around with the mechanics a little bit with the uh, spring loaded worms, uh, but I'm now at a point where I can do some decent testing. Sometimes not they go to a longer exposure. Sorry? Uh, uh, yeah. During guiding, sometimes they go to a longer exposure and that mm -hmm. seems to steady it out a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, um, so a small victory about the open six RMS, at least for one night. I'll get there again. Uh, that's all I wanted to share, actually. And by the way, I did sign up for a Stella Fane, so next week I'll be taking off for four weeks and uh, go visit a lot of no, not a lot of uh, national parks and stuff, and uh, go to Stella Fane, go to MIT to see my son, and uh, go back. That's great. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm, I'm taking sort of like a voluntary uh, furlough because uh, work is kind of slow nowadays, and they. Rather than furloughing us, they decided, you know, if you, because there were a lot of people that were going to take vacation and they decided to give us, uh, let us keep our uh, benefits, specifically uh, medical benefits. So that makes it easy to take the time off because our company has an arrangement like, you know, if you, if you are not there for like more than a month in two following us, so there's a rule that you can lose your medical benefits, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is kind of inconvenient, mm -hmm. but uh, they forgo that now. So anyway. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to that. I'm not bringing a telescope. I just bring a, you know, binoculars and a tripod. Because most likely it will rain there. I, I think. <laughs> so I don't know. So Jerry, Jerry mentioned Alan McClure in comments, and there's a web page, <coughs> kind of showing. Yeah. Stony Ridge Observatory. That's up in Yeah. Yeah, he did dramatic work. Mm. I think John Rogers used to be with the BCAS. I don't remember that name. Boy, I'd hate to set that scope up. <laughs> he set that up out of his truck there, and then he just lived there for a week or so. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be 
putting that thing up every night. Yeah, that's it. It's um, I don't remember exactly. It was he customized it a lot, but it was basically one of these old iron mounts, like a cave. And Charles uh -huh. Schuler has that twenty-inch Explore Scientific. I think it's an F three point nine, and the uh, mirror box weighs eighty-five pounds. And you yeah. know, Chuck or Charles is uh, six four or something like that. He picks that thing up like it was nothing. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's the Dobsonian, so he just has to put it down on the ground and start assembling the truss work above it. <clears throat> there used to be a bodybuilder that used to go to RTMC and Pinus all the time. He used to have incredibly large, heavy telescopes. And, you know, there's, there's, a big, no... there's a big fingerprint on that picture of Alan's trailer, if you look again. Hmm. See above the trailer on the sky. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably get some contact points out of that thing. <laughs> anyway, Mike, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, okay. Well, you know, back in those at 73, you know, a lot of us were in our 20s, and uh, at RTMC there was this bodybuilder that used to go to Pinos also, and he had incredibly large telescopes, you know, and it was no big deal for him to, you know, put things together because he could, uh, you know, military press 300 pounds. So, <laughs> wow. and, and nowadays, you know, I'm thinking twice, well, my niece and mount, the head weighs 50 pounds, you know, how many more years I'm going to be moving that around without tweaking my back. <laughs> So does anybody know where the Stony Ridge Observatory was? Yeah, it's up in the, I think if I've got it right, memory serves me, it's up in the Angeles National Forest on the way to, between Tahunga and Mount Wilson. And I think they had a, at one point, I think that's where the, the amateurs got together and built a 30 inch telescope up there. Oh, well, there it is, I found it. Stony-ridge.org. Yeah. 1957. Oh, there's a picture of it on the back of a pickup truck, and it's longer than the truck is long. <laughs> it, it looks like it's a, one of the something built by cave. You know, it's a F8 or something, 30 inch F8. You risk life and limb by getting up to the eyepiece. One of the times that I went to, uh, Mount Pinos, there was a guy, I think he had a 36 inch scope uh -huh. and it was huge. I mean, it had to be 12 feet taller and they had a big folding ladder. They had to climb up to get to the eyepiece. And I don't that, know how much it weighed, but I- That scope was called I, the yard scope. Okay, <laughs> because it was 36 inches. Yes. Has any of you guys uh, viewed through the, the 60 inch at uh, Mount Wilson? Yeah. the. Um... We had a guy in the Los Angeles Astronomical Club or Society, um, Tommy Craig, and he was the telescope technician up at Mount Wilson. And if uh, something happened and the scientists that were reserved the night or something didn't show up, then he'd call and some of us would go up there and we'd look through the telescope. Uh, well, I went with some friends, uh, you know, they were renting it and uh... One of my friends who had a lot more money than I did uh, had a scheduling conflict. So I got to go and uh, view through that. And it can be a little bit scary when it's pointed at certain areas of the sky because you literally are climbing on top of this doggone scope in the dark and you're about 12 to 15 feet off the ground. <laughs> When the air steady, it gives nice images of the planets. Oh, oh, um, I was seeing, uh, we saw a Sirius in its pup, um, and uh, we were looking at star clusters in the Andromeda galaxy, like they were M13, and uh, we were seeing belts on uh, Uranus, I believe. Huh. So Mike, are you talking about the 60 inch or the 100 inch? 60 inch. That's it. I, I, yeah. I think it was about $1,500 per night. And uh, the one thing when you use this telescope, 
don't go for large extended objects uh, because you won't see anything. The field right. of view is too small. Very narrow um, field view. Right. Uh, but looking at the Eskimo um, Nebula was fantastic. Tons of detail and um, electric uh, electric blue. And uh, we were looking at protostars that were whipping up dust trails in the Orion Nebula, you know, um, and, you know, everything was so bright and vibrant in this stuff. It's really great. You ought to, you ought to try and uh, spend the night there uh, with it uh, before you can't climb up on top of a 15-foot ladder and climb on a telescope. Oh, wow. It's made out of uh, wine bottle glass, so I can uh, from France. So I can only imagine they had a very bad year. The Vintners. I know the one hundred inch was made out of wine bottle glass, but was the sixty right. also? Yeah, must have been. Okay. Yeah. This yeah, they made the hundred inch twice. Yeah. They made it several times. They rejected the first disc because all the bubbles in it, and then they, they didn't have anything that was nearly as successful as the first try. So they went back to that and, and made the, uh, the mirror surface on that. And they didn't hit any bubbles of significance. Uh. So it worked out very well. If you see the picture of the um, 100 inch disc before it's ground, you can see the three different layers of pores and the patterns of bubbles. It's very dramatic inside. Oh, you want to see something very ugly. Um, uh, I was, I, I helped out on the uh, Group 70 project and uh, they used the, the sister disc to the uh, Schmidt uh, telescope. And that disc had all sorts of junk inside it you know it was you know it, it it was pretty ugly inside all sorts of debris and stuff uh, and i guess uh well that had to be on the eyepiece because if you got debris on no, the mirror it's... no it was inside the mirror because of the oh, oh okay oh okay you know, it was the pyrex blank and, uh, i don't know if they ever got done with it but I, I spent about a year a year <laughs> helping them out uh I was using my thumb on the edge. They had a turned edge and uh, I mean, uh, uh, a raised edge. And I think part of their problem was is that they didn't have a proper tester to test this large, very fast uh, mirror. I think it was like F2.5. And uh, uh, this, I think this was before bath interferometers. They had some sort of weird thing that they cooked up they were having issues testing it and then giving the errors out. Were you successful in removing the upturned edge? Yeah. With your yeah. thumb? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We were all there with our thumbs, you know, don't press too hard. Okay. And, and, and so they had this big disc that was rotating. Everybody's putting it on there. And then they have the, the sublaps 12 inches in diameter. And they have that two foot one, but I, I think the, the issue was that um, they, didn't, they didn't have a good handle on um, interpreting the results um, because it was such a fast mirror. It was F2.5, 70 inches. And uh, whenever they went to test it, um, it was this big thing. It was all hands on deck. And they had these big rings on there. And they were taking, the, they would undo it and have to put a sledgehammer to the ring on the edge of the disc to break it loose with a sledgehammer. Um, and, then, and then they uh, would lift the disc on this A-frame and tilt it vertically. And then they had the problem of air stratification where the bottom of the mirror was colder than the top of the mirror. So they had to go and uh, figure out what type of asymmetry was in their 
results. <laughs> I mean, it was all volunteer. It was, uh, you know, run by a bunch of guys that retired on uh, HP uh, uh, stock that tanked. And so they were doing things on, you know, you know, they were trying to make do with what they had. <laughs> Is that a picture of your, um, Mike, is that a picture of your uh, observatory in the background? Yeah, and there's the COVID junk. Oh yeah, and your helper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob Lazar. Yeah. What's it? Oh, Bob Lazar, is that Bob? Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob. <laughs> yeah. So I, I managed to go out there and take some. So whatever damage. happened to the real Bob Lazar? He is in like uh, back east Wisconsin. There's a um, a uh, uh, a documentary on him. I had lost track with him, and uh, having the job that I had with the clearance that I had, I made sure that I didn't keep contract contact with the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so. You know, we, we, you know, for a while there, it was, you know, it was sort of like, have you heard about Bob or, you know, and after the Area 51, we didn't, we didn't know what the, 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 the thing, but uh, yeah, he's married to um, the gal he met, um, they're still together, and I guess they raided his place and, um, I don't know, but when I, I saw him after all these years, you know, he opens his mouth, says a couple words, I go to my wife, that's Bob. <laughs> so Mike, Mike, what was the what was the brand of your observatory there? It's next to him. Next to Yeah, you can see it if he moves his head to the yeah, yeah. there you can see it there. next. Um yeah. I so the dome is a online. picture. Yeah, I'll take yeah. Yeah. The dome's on the other side, I believe. So it's eight feet. It is small inside, you know. Um, what diameter is that? Eight feet. Eight, okay. And that's big enough. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you answered the I question. Ten feet. Ten what feet. size scope do you have? I have, uh, I have a, now a C11. Uh, in tandem with a three inch refractor. Oh. And uh, the, the, the issue is the counterweight on the Misu is really long. And so, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, that's going to be too small for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, had I, I would have tried to fight for a, a slightly larger one, but this was cheap enough. Um, yeah, they don't make a bigger one, do they? They were thinking about it, uh, uh -huh. but it's one of those. You know, you know what the problem is. Um, some of the chemicals for the plastics are in short supply because of all the bad weather and the hurricanes affecting a lot of places yeah. in the in the south. Mm. You know, they uh, on on the news up here, um, people can't get furniture. Yeah, I like saw the same cars. news story here because the. Uh, the chemicals they make for foam yeah. are non-existent. And so you order a, a couch and instead of a one month delay, you may not get it for the next six to eight months. Hmm. Yeah. Now, is that because of COVID? It's part, partly that, but um, they had a lot of hurricanes come through and do, do some big damage and, and storms. You know, like in Louisiana and the Gulf states, where I guess their EPA laws aren't as bad as here, and so they have all these chemical factories producing plastics. So, so. for for most people, it's foam for the furniture, but for Dick, it's the dome. Yeah. Well, the I guy told me. Plastic. The guy told me he's got all this stuff. See. 
So that's what ball blows my mind is if you've got all the stuff except for the door, but, which is the only thing that you don't make, you said you make everything in house, then put it on a truck and get it over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a lot of these places I've had I've had issue with Nextone with support on that where the guy disappeared um, too. I just I think a lot of these places, it's a side ha uh, hustle. They're, they're not, it's not their main job, you know. Uh, uh, Jerry, you know. are you ordering a, a pre-made uh, roll-off? Uh, uh, is it pre-made? No. no. No, I, I worked um, as an undergraduate in college. I worked as a carpenter in the summers, So I, just I've been planning on just getting some two by fours and plywood and building the thing. It's a trivial exercise, but now I'm understanding it's a major investment. Oh yeah. Wood. Oh yeah. The, the plywood's so expensive. I know. Yeah. So, but it is coming down a bit. Yeah. It is. I I had visions of making a hemispherical um, roll off where it. it one part would slide and the other was going to meet it, be made out of uh, uh, PCB material, you know, copper clad, because back in those days in the early 70s, there was a bunch of PCB places in the San Fernando Valley, and they were literally throwing this stuff away, and I never did get around to uh, getting any of that stuff, you know. So, you know. So your joints could all be soldered. Yeah. <laughs> you solder it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get you get that green patina like uh uh Griffin Observatory. Or the Statue yes. of Liberty. Yeah. Oh my roof has got that. Oh. My roof is done in early pigeon crap. <laughs> my, you... my roof is, is standing seam copper. <laughs> 16 gauge. Oh, that's a that's a lot of money you got invested in. Yeah. Sixty thousand dollars for the roof. Yeah, I know. Jeez. How long does it last? Hundred years. You planning on lasting that long? Well, I. Uh, it would be a miracle if I'm around in a hundred years. Well, I mean, I'd be a, I'd be 180 years old then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got it too late in life. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, I guess the more and more people are become are are living longer. I guess you know uh, a lot of people are living to close to 120. Great news. Well, you know, you have to you have to choose your parents carefully. Yeah, right. Good. Good <laughs> <luck>. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mom, my mom's ninety six, and my father passed away ninety ninety four, Gordon, and my grandmother was one hundred and three. So. Oh, is this um, Bruce's roof? Yeah, you could. Uh... Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, one with a circular driveway right there, yeah. 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 I guess you can't zoom any more than that, can that you? Looks, that looks about max. Huh. Yeah, after it was in for a couple of years, I did have a problem where I was up on the roof and I noticed the copper had torn where it was, there huh. was a stress riser that had gone around a corner and I called the... Uh, Safeguard Roofing, who put it in and explained the problem, and boom, they're right out there. They said, oh, we know what to do about that. They came and actually cut the copper, and they slid another piece underneath it, so they now had a slip joint that was, you know, layered, so the water would run off of it. Good. That's a unique looking house. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty. Boy, look at the backyard on those two in the lower right. Long backyard. <laughs> oh, that—that is—that's a story. 
those are the Chase properties. They bought those two lots. There are seven lots there. The first one you can see with a path across it that's yeah. owned by the county. And there, there were seven lots. They bought five of them for $30,000 a piece. And they're told at the time they bought them, they were not a buildable lot because as you can see over on the right, there's a big green field. Well, that's mm -hmm. got a vernal pool. That's a sacred pool. And that, you know, when it rains, that's a hundred foot diameter standing water that stays yeah. there for a couple of months. But you can't build within a hundred feet of a vernal pool. So they tried to get their building permit from the county and the county denied it. And they sued the county or threatened to sue the county. The county rolled over, but they're in the coastal zone. So they have to go through the coastal commission and the coastal commission says, no, 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 but you can't take somebody's property. It's a taking. You have to compensate them if you want to take their property. And the coastal commission didn't want to do that. So they made it very draconian. They, uh, they uh, allow them to build only their front yard setback is five feet. They have no wow. side yard setback. There's no setback between the two homes there. And uh, so they, they figured they made, and the stuff in back is the sacred zone. Uh, only biologists can go back there and they have to have them come out many times a year and put those flags up and, you know, take samples. I don't know what all they do, but uh, I figured that, you know, with those uh, requirements that they would never build the house, but they did it anyway. Huh. And they had a lawyer, uh, uh, Jeffrey Nelson was a, I don't know it's what doesn't matter. Uh, he shepherded the process through. Well, he ended up owning the, the building, the, or, uh, the brown colored roof. That was the payment for all of his legal expenses. Uh, and those, those rent for $11,000 a month. Wow. Wow. That's out of the student's range. No, no, they put 12 people in them. Oh, that's, yeah. But yeah, individual students, I mean. Oh, this, so is by the, uh, this is by the college? Yeah, it's out in oh. Isla Vista. It's the student ghetto. Oh, okay. So the well, you're not, this, is actually, this is actually a Rio del Mar. I, oh, Isla okay. Vista start, starts at Camino Cordo and goes east. So those two blocks of the streets are uh, single family residential. Okay. Different zoning, different track. Yeah, there's Santa Barbara Airport. Right. And University. And there's... Oh, a second. Uh, where's Raytheon? Or it's not Raytheon. Anymore. Oh, it's up near the blue. That's the lagoon. It's on Hollister Avenue. You have to get. You have to, you have to go further. Yeah. No, no. no. Uh, That's the way. Okay, there. Mine was on. Yeah, yeah Hollister. Yep. Well, look for a dry lake. It had a big, uh, a big the radar product. pond. So, um, Hollister on, we're on, on, it's on the land side of Hollister. Oh, so, oh, Raytheon over there. Okay. Yeah. No, it's this. No, on the side of the, of Hollister. No, it's the build, it's the two gray buildings and then the brown roof building and then. So, oh, no, I didn't work there. I worked down the yeah. block. That's B1, <laughs> B2, and B3. No, no, you have to go down towards the bottom left. Yeah, to get down to the... No, to, to get where I was. Other, the other there. way. No. Let's see, across from the airport, Raytheon. Uh, almost uh, almost uh, where the... Uh, well, that's Las Canaris, that big S-shaped thing. So you, you need to go further east. Yeah. So, um, yes. The Marriott... Oh, there, there's a, a Marriott Hotel. Yeah, that's the building there, the long gray one with. Oh the yeah, gray I, with I see it. it. I see it. It's yeah. it's got a it's got a green hexagon. That's where the uh, that's where it is. it's up at the top. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's green because probably they're not <laughs> doing anything about the water inside. What's what's with the hexagon there? Oh, uh, they used to be over the water uh, testing. Oh. There, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's electronic warfare. You know, yeah, you guys I, was, I was there for six, 
six years. I thought they'd only be here for about one or two, and they'd lay, lay in the office. So, so you guys all worked there? Did, did you guys what? all work there at Raytheon? Or? I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, that little building that's up on top of the first building was a classified area. Glasspool was the uh, head of that department. Uh, there. So Jer Jerry and, and Bruce, did you work for Raytheon? Uh, no, I worked for Delco for 37 years. Yeah, I worked for Raytheon, but not this Raytheon. This was the traditional Raytheon. I worked at the part of Hughes Aircraft Company that Raytheon bought, which is up the street farther, closer to yeah. uh, Stork Road. Okay. You Thanks. did the sensors. Oh, Santa yeah. Barbara Research, you mean? Yeah, yeah Santa Barbara Research Center. Okay. Yeah, that's oh, it yeah. right there. You got it with the with the cursor. Yeah, that's it. But, well, yeah, that Santa, that was not Raytheon. That was Santa Barbara Research. Okay. Yeah, but then Raytheon bought it, and it became Raytheon Vision System. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. And then a couple people branched off of that, and they uh, they. Uh, there's a vision system up the road. That, um, and Delco is this across the street. Yes. Yeah, yeah when I started working at Delco, it was what, 19, February 64. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, where Target is now, you know, it was it, at that time it was two guys, you know, I forgot what it is, uh, but it, they're always the big store. Uh, before that was all put in, there was a Quonset hut on that property. It was, and that's where our head of security lived. <laughs> now, what there was a linear accelerator down here somewhere, right? Yeah, down. I think you're uh, talking about Delco. Right? No, that's yeah. the fastest gun in the West. That's <laughs> a uh, light gas gun. We could fire projectiles at seventeen thousand miles an hour, and study uh -huh. the. Uh, it's a reentry physics range. You, you pump down the chamber, you put the gases in there, represented the upper atmosphere. You fire a, a model down there. We had Schlaren optics, we had radar, we uh, did all this experiment. And it, you know, 30 milliseconds after you fire, it impacted on the uh, uh, Sabo catcher on the other, I mean, the, the, the model catcher, which were uh, five inch thick steel plates at the end of the, the uh, range. And it would generally put holes through three of them. Wow. Now, now zoom out a bit so you're over the um, airport. The airport's right across. That's Los Canaris there, and the airport's right yeah. across. Yeah. Okay. Right okay. Zoom, zoom out. Zoom out more. A little bit more. Okay. Uh, both to the right. Okay. Okay. So where that airport was back in. Um, the 1600s and before that was a deep water port. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there was, <laughs> that got there, filled there were, in by a oh, by, it's all by a mudslide that took out Galena. <laughs> well, I thought that was filled in in the late 18, 1880s. They had three years of torrential rains, and all yeah. the all the silt was washed yeah. down and filled in the lagoon. Yeah, it it took out the, most of Galena, and then it uh -huh. just kept going. And then in World War II, they kind of uh, shaved off the bumps and put in the airports for military. And fighters used to go taxi across Hollister. Some of the well, buildings you go by look really old, like they were built in World War II, because they were. Um, and they would close off Hollister. And, uh, well, there used to be a big uh, mountain, or not a mountain, but a big hill on mm -hmm. the uh, on, uh, side, near near Galita Beach, and they took that the dirt from that as fill for the airport. Yeah. So there used to be a big mountain there, and it's not there anymore. Yeah. There you can see through the ocean bottom right down to the mechanism. <laughs> what's what's with the circle here? It's kind of strange. No yeah, you know, it's like there was an oil spill or something all the way around the the Coal Oil Point platform. Well, they have higher resolution pictures there, that's all. Oh, that's an oil platform, yeah. Yeah. Platform Holly, probably. Okay. Little known, this is Area 52. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a giant flying saucer. Yeah. 
All right, enough of that stuff. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, I I I did some technical sleuthing on some broken equipment uh, this week. Uh, when I went to see uh, our friend Tom in uh, San Francisco, they had these uh, smart blinds that could operate off your uh, cell phone or Alexa or something like that. And it consisted of a tube, uh, a one inch tube, okay. And it would roll it on there and uh, they got the they, they they got the first set in and it didn't work, and um, with with the technical people I realized they had a bad firmware load because there's there's electronics in there. Okay, and uh, it's 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 pretty interesting how they they put it together. There's a a module for um, that's Wi-Fi. There's a module that's um, Bluetooth. And there's a module that's a power supply. And so the, the problem is this, this is in the steel tube. They crimp the ends so that you can't take the guts out. And so right over here on the top are little holes for programming the microprocessor. So what they told him was, we're sending you a new ones out, you know, trash the old ones. So um, it's... I've got three motors for projects for astronomy now. This is uh, <laughs> it's a triple planetary gear DC motor. You know, it's 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 really strong. I've got the driver electronics, and what's interesting, I've got two sets of lithium-ion batteries with a charger. Oh, and by the way, these were solar powered. Okay, they weren't plugged into any wall. I put a little panel about this thing uh, that you take to the windows. I thought it was an interesting product and I just had to go take it apart a and see what's inside. So again, like a lot of things that are built today, they're not made to be fixed. They're made to be to go into the land and they, they don't work, but um, at least I got a couple of motors what are those motors going to drive? I'm not sure yet. I mean, they're really strong. I mean, uh, they're metal gears inside, so it's probably good for. It's probably about, you know, like. Oh, those are like aircraft, uh, you know, like uh, model airplane motors uh, for servos. Um. No, this is the, the the motor on this is is about oh. inch and a half long. Oh, okay, I mean, okay. No, it's 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 a really stout motor, and it's got. So uh, you're not going to try to make a, a tracking mount out of them. Well, funny you should say. Uh, on the end of this is a magnet, and they do have some hull sensors. But, um, I'm not sure if I can get that working, but. We'll figure, we'll figure out something. At the very least, it'll uh, it'll be part of the focusing mechanism, um, possibly in like a, a shutter for taking darts and flats. Hey, Mike. Mike, it seems like your volume of your voice has gotten weaker. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, probably because you have to breathe know. harder. <laughs> yeah, well. Here's the thing. I'm I'm thinking about getting a, a microphone like that you have, you know, because you know, laptops, most of their microphones, unless you're really close to them, you know, I've, I've got this this webcam, you know, that's separate, and so I'm not always close. So, anyway. Okay. So, what else is curious for us to look at tonight? So had, a, had, had a good night viewing the sky last night, although the moon was out, I guess. Uh, where you, you know, live, where I live, it was overcast. Uh, One of the things that I am going to look at next time around is I think I'm going to get that in, 
D127IS back up. I'm trying to figure out what where that ray, the ray thing is coming from, like I got on Antares. Because I'm going to try to probably go after the North American and do a three panel mosaic with that instrument. And Deneb is nearby. So I'm going to put Deneb just out of the field of view on that thing. And I bet you I know what's wrong with it. It's the filter adapter. Filter adapter is 48 millimeters. And that's two, and, and you got a 2.4 inch focuser. So I think the filter adapter is the thing that's causing the ray effect. And that's what I'm going to prove. I'm going to put it. I'm going to try it with the filter adapter versus without, and see like what happens. Sharpie pen. Good plan. Yeah. Or, yeah. or that ultra dark uh, pink that I had, you know, blacker than black. Well, I can show you. I can show you some pictures from the last advanced imaging conference. The instruments part, I think. Oh, okay. Scroll through those. <laughs> If you recognize anybody, let me know. So this is from Fink this is the representative from Finger Lakes Instruments. And there's the chip of his camera that he's selling. This looks like it's about two inches or two and a half, two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Gary, did you just do this this year? Um I've done it every year they've had it. The and I they are they, this they did not have it in 2020. The, I think this was 2019 or 2018. It's the last one. We got they do them every two years. They got interrupted by the COVID. This is. But they uh, got a bigger camera there on the right. That's the one on the right. Oh, you mean on his right? Uh, on on the on the red table. Yeah, as we view it on his left, on our right. Yeah, Danielle. that's the one I was talking about. That's a two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch sensitive area. Okay. What's okay, the megapixel the in... on that? Do you know? I do not recall. They have all these brochures for everything, and I collect all those stuff, but then I sort of lose it. So, yeah. Um, they're. I just I just don't recall. They're they're very big. Yeah, looks like. So. And this is um, from. Um, That's plane wave, right? No, this isn't plane wave. This is software BISC new mount. Oh, okay. Getting away from the German equatorial. The scope is by. Um, yeah, it's a paramount. Paramount mount, yeah. Yeah. I okay. don't. The scope might be theirs too. I don't know. Everybody's coming out with new stuff all the time. Uh huh. It's really, it just really feels good to walk around there. I like walking through a hardware store too, but this is, this is better. With so, a big fork mount like that, do you have problems with it wiggling? I don't think so. Uh, the nice thing about a, a, a fork like fork mount like this is it points straight up. The best part of the sky is available to you. And when you okay. have a German equatorial, you, you get to the best part of the sky and then you have to do a mount flip to get to the other part. So yeah, right, right. keep from hitting the tripod. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my uh, AP mounts, they track about an hour and a half or something past the meridian, which is very nice. Oh, wow. That is good. Yeah. So then this is Innovations Foresight. Um, I don't recall what they make, but there's their whole setup. It's a tracking setup the telescope, filters, camera. Isn't it that uh, uh, the uh, auto guider that uh, um, so kind of... it's on axis guider? Okay. Yeah, O N A G. Yeah. Okay. And this is Optech. Um, they make um, uh, focusers, um, various things for the sort of the next level up after uh, amateurs. It's on the interface between schools that do professional research. What's his name? Uh, Adam Block at Mount Lemon has a lot of Optech equipment on there. And I have an Optech focuser that I'm gonna put on my 18 inch uh, gra um, astrograph when I get the final parts from the machine shop. This is astrometric instruments. Don't recall what they make, but she's friendly. 
this is Canon with all their latest cameras, their non, um, non, the non mirror, mirror free camera was a big thing. Yeah. Huh. A Do they ago. make that without the infrared filter on it too? You know, I didn't get into the details of that. So I figure I'm supplied in cameras as more than I'll ever need. So I really don't <laughs> spend a lot of time perusing their stuff. So, um, but they're friendly. Everybody's friendly. This is yeah. Apic, um, which took over, I think these are the guys that took over SBIG. Um, maybe, I don't recall now. I think you're pointing to ZWO right now. Atex to the Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, ZWO I mean, and then yeah. the other guys. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. ZWO, good. It didn't look right with all these red things in front. Which are taking over. <laughs> yes. And here's the um, dome shelter that you had shown earlier. Oh, yeah. Earlier. They're quite pricey. The yeah. Word, the word among users at this conference is that in a good storm, these things leak. Wow. So uh -huh. but I know I know uh, Los Cumbres Observatory has a bunch of them set up around the world. And you know, that home dome, there was a testimony there that I read about that. The guy, they went through Katrina in the thing. They had like 100 and what, 40 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour yeah. winds. And they said that they even lost some outbuildings and they, they live kind of like in a heavily wooded area. But they said that, that that thing made it through the storm, even though they lost buildings and trees fell down. Uh -huh. I think that, that thing made it. So that was a good testimony. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, it doesn't have any flat sides, so it's a little more aerodynamically smooth. Yeah, might develop a little lift though, you never know. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. What's nice about that is you don't have to worry about the shutter so much. You can just you know oh. set it in one place yeah. and just let the thing rip. That's the thing I don't like about domes is that you have to look through the shutter and I like looking at the whole sky. Yeah. So I like, I'm a roll off guy. So, and there we are with um, Astro Hutek, which has all sorts of interesting stuff. Um, mostly telescope alignment lasers and setups like that, that I have. And then I have an off axis guider set up from them because it has all the degrees of freedom I need to frame and rotate and find the guide star. And then uh, this is AG optical. They have a nice looking scope, but I'm not really familiar with them. Looks like an Starlight. RC scope. Yeah, looks like an RC scope. And then yeah. Starlight Express with their cameras. There's a guy looking for people to talk to from uh, Celestron, I think. Celestron, yeah. yeah. That's a 14 inch, I think, there at the front. Guy, do you think he's got enough weight on there? No, that's 10 micron. It doesn't, I can't read it. So yeah, they have, they have a double mount right here. Looks like eight inches, yeah. or nine inches or something. On oh the yeah. Aren't these guys- why, why would somebody have a double mount like that? Stereo. Twice, <laughs> twice as you can do twice as much work yeah. in, in the uh, same amount of time. Right. And you got you two cameras. That, but you could, I bet you there's a way of making ones because there's a lot of knobs up there at the top. I bet you can move one a little bit with respect to the other so you can actually have two separate fields at the same time. Oh, so like a stereoscopic view. Yeah. Well, stereoscopic, but also different views of different things. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is Mathis mm -hmm. Instruments. This is uh, Mr. Mathis. And he is the one that for years has been making this very massive um, fork mount. And this is a design, these designs come from buyers back uh, in the 60s and 70s and 80s who made these excellent mounts. And he worked with him, all the machine parts were from buyers and buyers is retired. So I forget what his first name is. So he's, um, he has his own machinist that make these things now. It's right at the beginning of professional instruments. But there's quite a demand for these things, I guess. He says he sells a lot of them. This mount is, is about $18,000. Probably weighs about 18,000 pounds, too. Yeah, yeah probably does. <laughs> this is Hercules Telescope. This is a um, 
a uh, Newtonian astrograph and the, uh, the mirror inside rotates. So you have your stuff mounted on each of four ports and then you rotate the secondary mirror around to access that port. So, ah, ah, cute. Yeah. I see an alignment problem coming, but. Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Jason from Mead, uh, Coronado. You know, uh, Mead bought Coronado from the Lunt family and they needed the money because the elder Lunt had cancer. And then after he passed, uh, the family started up Lunt Instruments after the five year no compete phrase on their sale was up. And now they make Lunt, they don't make him exactly the way Coronado did. They used to for the Coronado brand name, they make them now slightly different way, but it specializes in hydrogen alpha telescopes. I have one of the Lunt ones, an 80 millimeter Lunt telescope, and they're just wonderful. Uh, Tom has exactly the same scope that I do. We fight back and forth over it. Who's got it now? No, no, there's stuff that's fixed. <laughs> hmm. So, um, Mead Instruments. That he's looks like a 14 inch again. Yeah. Or probably 12 inch. Yeah. I don't see. No, is that, that company defunct now or they're still around? I they mean, were bought by Celestron. Oh, okay. With Orion, the lost bought, by, bought by Orion, I think. Orion. Oh, oh Orion. I'm yeah. sorry. Orion. Okay, You're yeah, right. Orion. They, they yeah. got into the lawsuit with Celestron, I guess, right? Yeah. Yep. And they lost. They were run by a Chinese company and they were they were caught violating the antitrust law. They were price fixing. And it was Orion that sued them. Wow. Because they wanted and then they, yeah, and then they, Wow, they ended up buying them. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Probably a penny on the dollar kind of thing. Well, I would think, gosh, hostile takeover. Uh -huh. And this is astrophysics down here. This is um, their chief, I forget his name, is their chief software designer. And this is Roland whatever his last name is, Roland Christensen. He's the owner and design, chief designer of uh, astrophysics. Astrophysics is very interested. He was very interested years ago in astronomy and uh, he wanted to make some really good telescopes. So he decided that his business model was to make the telescope he wanted and then make enough of them so he could live off them by selling all but the one he wanted. And so he goes through all these different types of telescopes like making new types of telescopes some of them very exotic. They're all state of the art. And so he can have one. <laughs> uh, and then he just has the other ones to sell to make a business out of it. So it's a hobby that paid off a good business model. So it, this it, is and Jerry, Jerry, isn't astrophysics known for the mounts? They're well, that's the mount that Chuck has, right? Yeah, Chuck has the 400, I think. Uh -huh. and, but they also make telescopes. Um, they they and their, their telescopes, they make limited runs of them. So the, the price on an old astrophysics telescope is just sky high because they're so sought after. But it's mostly the name. I mean, they are excellent scopes, but you can get other scopes that perform just as well. And they don't and cost Jerry, Jerry, the, the mount at the uh, Museum of Natural History, what, what kind of mount is that? Isn't that astrophysics? No, that's a um, plane wave mount. Plane wave. Yeah. It's a plane wave scope too. Well, it's a different scope on a different mount. So if it's not plane wave mount, then it's some. It's I, I that Paul and I spent a lot of time in that dome trying to get the electronics to work. We yeah, finally Bruce helped out. Then yeah, yeah. We finally invited Bruce in, and he found all these floating areas because the, every time there was any electrical events in the sky, the inst the electronic guts would short out. And so uh, Bruce spent some time grounding things and it hasn't blown out since. Good well, <laughs> when all else fails, follow the directions. Yeah. <laughs> well, someone set it up and didn't follow the directions. Yeah. So um, this is Roland Christian. That's his last name again of uh, astrophysics showing one of his telescopes. And there's his software designer back there. God, I forgot his name. Um, forget who this is too, but this is the astrophysics mount. This is a, uh, can't read it. That, Does it that looks it? like a Matusov um, scope. It's got the really meniscus front lens. Yes, it does. It's a, it's a Maxitov. 
I think it's yeah. a 10, 10 inch and it weighs a ton. That well, thing yeah. must weigh. I mean, that means that front corrector is probably an inch thick. Yeah, yeah. But it's meant as a real small secondary. It's, it's optimized for planetary photography. Uh huh. And I forget. Oh, this is Skywatch. Skywatcher, Skywatch USA. They make excellent scopes. They spun off of Mead early on. I think that was them. Oh, that was Explore Scientific. Never mind that. This is a new company for me. Uh, I don't know where their brand name is, but they make the Eagle stuff. It was a hot product in 2017. Well, Eagle, it says Eagle Core in the back there. No, it's is that the name of the company. Prima Luce Labs. Yeah, Prima oh. Luce. So oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So anyway, they've got a really complicated inner joint things. Looks like something plumbed together by the three stooges, but I'm sure it works fine. <laughs> So. Wow, is that thing is really that is so rickety. convoluted. I can hardly figure it out. Yeah, you got Wi-Fi sticking up there on top. Yeah. This well, was the hot topic for that for that whole show. Was everybody had these computers? That's a whole computer up there. Oh, um, no screen, okay. no keyboard, and it it uh, hooks over Wi-Fi to your and it runs everything on the scope, takes the data, and then it downloads the data to you because you're looking at it over the internet. So, and hmm. so there's a closer view of it. I tried to get. Oh, I, I remember seeing that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, I wonder what the benefit of making them out like that is. Well, my my biggest problem with imaging at night is uh, wire or cable management. And either I or my dog trip over the cables <laughs> and the whole thing goes to hell. And I ruin equipment and I, I put you zip ties to try and get everything simplified and stuff. But if you can have a computer that just thinks the information up to your office, uh, that's a big advantage. Just two cables going up there, one to run the mountain, one to power everything. And that, that would be great. Yeah. So but I struggle on. Okay, this is another view of Eagle Core, the whole thing. Where was this held? This was at the San Jose um, Conference. Oh, the Convention Center? Center. Yeah, Whatever. Convention yeah. Center, that's it. This is a stellar view. I think this is a uh, five inch. Looks like about- That's like the one that Mike Curtis has. Doesn't yeah. he have one of those? Yeah. So, and then, yeah, these are the Stellar View guys. I think they're fairly local to where I'm at. Oh, uh, they're up there's in the Bob. There's what? Uh, Bob, uh, to, um, okay. Good old, what's his name? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm having a senior moment. He used to be with my club. Uh, him and Tony used to live really close to each other. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is obviously plane wave instruments. Yeah. And there's their famous uh, corrected Dal Kirkham, which is a brilliant piece of engineering. And it's this is probably plane wave coming out with their corrected Dal Kirkham, probably drove um, Richie Creech and optical or whatever they call it uh, out of business because they the, their performance is superior to a Richie Creechian. They're easier to operate, and they cost about a third of what a Richie Creation costs. The guy's Bob Ferris. How about collimation? Bob Ferris, yeah. They're easy. Are they to hard collimate. to collimate? They are very much easier to collimate. Now that oh, really? they, they, once what they do, they don't have a mirror cell in them. They they support the primary mirror on the central spike, and they align everything. Once the telescope's made, they align everything, and then they pot everything in place. There's no adjustment. So, my um, my friend uh, has a, a yeah, Bob old, uh, inch one. Well, it's an adjust secondary, isn't there? Say that again. There's an adjustment on the secondary fall option. There is some adjustment up there. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean the the mirror and the 
Oh, okay. The mirror and the focal plane where the camera sits are perfectly parallel. You can't get their potted together there um, with epoxy or something. You can't tilt uh, one with respect to the other, uh, which is very important for having the whole focal plane in focus at once. Yeah, so don't get her near tilt, whatever you call it, when you move them out around. Yeah. yeah. My friend Mark Baugh, who has a 12 and a half inch one and gets excellent images with it, it's a totally enclosed. Okay, now these scopes are Taka, the mounts are Takahashi, but it says Skywatcher USA in the background. So I'm looking over several things, so it might not line up exactly with what the sign says. And there we're looking back at Celestron. There's a plane wave. Now this is a single arm out as um, plane wave mount. And it, uh, it, the, how to say it, the, the motor, there's no gears in it. If the motor coils are arrayed on a plane around here and the rotor is the rest of the mount. So it's the, the motor and the mount. There's no motor in the mount. The motor is the mount. Director, you need, to, you need to see one with the guts off, taken off so uh, you can see the guts to see what They're it probably is. just incredibly quiet then. It's incredibly quiet, incredibly accurate, incredibly expensive. Um, if you um, Google this later, you can probably find, because they have a picture of, of it with the covers off, so you can see how the motor's laid out and stuff. Do they have a motor that rotates the uh, camera or the imager? Up here? Well, no, at the back of the scope. Yeah, right here on the back of the scope. This this red band is the camera. and there's Right, but bandages. if you have an equatorial mount, I mean, a, a, a all ass mount, you have a, a image yeah. rotation unless you get rid of it. That's right. And so there is, I can't pick it out, but it is there. Now this is uh, Paramount MYT. It's their new, another picture of their um, fork mount. And this is the entrance to the exhibit hall from the lunchroom. This is Pat, my wife. This is Richard, who lives in Portland, and this is his wife. And that's the convention center, just random people. A good luck coming. No, that's it for that. Oh, that this was is, your wife. <laughs> yeah, that was my wife. This is. Um, a Falcon Heavy or something taking off from my backyard about five years ago. <laughs> Automatic focuser has trouble with small objects like that. So anyway, that's all hey, I can cool, Jerry. Look, looks Good like we're show. past nine, nine o'clock here. Okay. So Hank made it, made it back just at the end here. Okay. Yeah, I thought that that uh, Prima Luce device, I mean, that's not that revolutionary. I mean, the, the Raspberry Pi that I have does the same thing, but it costs 50 bucks. You know? I don't mean that it's <laughs> revolutionary in a technical sense. I mean, it's become the fad of the suppliers yeah. for the, and the, everybody at the show had those things. It was Yes, and it, it, it is very helpful to have those things. Yeah. I can tell you that, you know. Okay, well, I'm going to take off. See you guys later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.